welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत नेमली द अव्ययी भाव समास बहुव्रीही समास and the dvandva samasa we have already studied the avyayi bhava samasa in this course starting with the avyayi bhava samasa vidhayaka sutras stated in 2.1 from 2.1.5 up to 2.1.21 and then also the समासांतर प्रत्यय विधायक सूत्र स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम फोर पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम फाइव पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट वन जीरो सेवन अप टू फाइव पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट वन वन टू करंटली वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द बहुव्रीहि समास अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द बहुव्रीहि समास कैन बी ब्रीफली एक्सप्लेन in the form of an equation shown on this particular slide here we have x and y as two independent entities in terms of the word form and the meaning as well as the accent the plus sign here indicates the interrelation between x and y this is semantic interrelation now the speaker of sanskrit decides to choose decides to merge x and y together and form an output in the form of xy one unit xy is one unit in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent so the three general features of the samasa are aikarthya or ekarthata aikapadya or ekapadata and aikaswarya or ekaswarata to be more specific about the bahuvrihi samasa x and y which are the two separate independent entities which act as input and the output generated is one unit xy now to show the interrelation of the constituents with the one generated output so far we have been marking one of the letters in the bold to highlight the fact that that particular constituent acts as the head like for example in tatpurusha samasa when xy is the output we marked y as the in the bold characters to indicate that it is the head in the avyayi bhava samasa we marked x as the head we marked it with the bold characters which indicated that x is the head we are not doing anything of that sort in the bahuvrihi samasa and we are just letting x and y be x and y in order to also indicate the fact that neither x nor y are the head in the bahuvrihi samasa output so who is the head the head as far as the output of the bahuvrihi samasa is concerned is outside of the bahuvrihi samasa so anya padartha is the pradhana as far as the bahuvrihi samasa is concerned that is so peculiar that is so unique that's why we keep saying that the bahuvrihi samasa indicates the speaking capability of sanskrit people 
which was at a different plane altogether than the rest. Now in the Ashtadhyayi, Bahuvrihi Samasa is treated at various places. For example, the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras, the Sutras which prescribe the compounding, the Sutras which lay down the necessary conditions in the presence of which the Samasa takes place. These are from 2.2.23 onwards up to 2.2.28. 2.2.23 is Shesho Bahuvrihi and this sutra we have studied in the previous lecture. Up to 2.2.28 which is Tena Saheti Tulya Yoge. This is a very small section of sutras which prescribes the Bahuvrihi Samasa. Incidentally, 2.2.29 is Charthe Dvandvaha. Charthe Dvandvaha prescribes the Dvandva Samasa in the sense of Ch. The Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras are stated in 5.4 from the Sutra Samasantaha. As far as the Bahuvrihi Samasa is concerned, the Bahuvrihi Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras are stated in a big section that begins with 54113 onwards up to 54160. This is a very big section. It must also be noted that some part of this section does not actually prescribe any explicit pratyaya, rather it prescribes the substitution at the end of the samasa. And then the Swaravidhayaka Sutras are stated in 6.2. For example, Bahubriho Prakritya Purvapadam is 6.2.1. And then from 6.2.106 up to 6.2.120 is another small section as well as 6.2.162 up to 6.2.177 is another small section dealing with the Swaravidhayaka Sutras in the Ashtadhyayi. This is how Panini treats the Bahuvrihi Samasa in the Ashtadhyayi. We started studying the Sutra 2.2.24 in the previous lecture. 2.2.24 is Anekam Anyapadarthe. Here there are two Padas in the Sutra, Anekam which is Prathama Ekavachana or 1 slash 1 which means more than 1 and because this word is in the Prathama this will be termed as Upasarjana because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. Now Anya Padarthe is 7 slash 1 which means in the sense of the other Pada which is out of the compound which is different than the constituents. Words continued are Sup from 212, Sahasupa from 214, Samasaha from 213 and Samarthapadavidhihi from 211. Thus the meaning of the present sutra after having put all these together is the following. More than one interrelated subantas ending in the first triplet in the sense of the meaning of the other or outer word get compounded and the resultant compound is called Bahuvrihi. I repeat, more than one interrelated subantas ending in the first triplet that is Prathamantam in the sense of the meaning of the other or outer word get compounded and the resultant compound is called Bahuvrihi. I repeat, more than one interrelated subantas Samartham Anekam Subantam ending in the first triplet Prathamantam in the sense of the meaning of the other or outer word Anyapadarthe get compounded Samasyente and the resultant compound Samasaha is called Bahuvrihi Bahuvrihi We have also noted that the interrelation between the constituent Subantas is co-referentiality or Samanadhi Karanya. The interrelation between the constituent Subantas 
and the outer head word is that of the meaning of the vibhaktis except the meaning of the prathama vibhakti so the statement of the commentators is prathamarthe tu na bhavati we have noted that the following vibhaktis denote the following meanings and they will be the relations of the anya padartha with the constituent padarthas dvitiya vibhakti denotes karman when karman is not expressed by thing tritiya vibhakti expresses kartru as well as karana when it is not expressed by thing chaturthi vibhakti expresses sampradana and panchami vibhakti expresses apadana when they both are not denoted by the suffix shashti vibhakti denotes swaswami bhava etc owner and owned part and whole etc saptami vibhakti denotes the sense of adhikarana amongst them we have already studied dvitiya vibhakti denoting karma being the interrelation between the anya padartha and the constituent padarthas tritiya vibhakti in the sense of karta denoting the interrelation between the constituent padarthas and the anya padartha tritiya vibhakti denoting the sense of karana being the interrelation between the anya padartha and the constituent padarthas and also chaturthi vibhakti denoting the meaning of sampradana which is an interrelation between the anya padartha and the constituent padarthas what remains to be studied is now panchami vibhakti denoting apadana shashti vibhakti denoting swaswami bhava etc and saptami vibhakti denoting the meaning of adhikarana which should act as the interrelation between the constituent padarthas and the anya padartha let us now take up the panchami vibhakti for study panchami vibhakti denotes apadana when not denoted by any other suffix let us take the example the meaning to be conveyed is the vessel from which rice is extracted we are talking about a particular vessel a pot which in which the rice is cooked and now the rice is extracted from this therefore now the laukika vigraha is udhrutaha odanaha yasyaha sa udhrutaha odanaha yasyaha sa remember the anya padartha is sa which is feminine in gender so obviously the compound thus formulated will become the qualification of the feminine gender and therefore this compound will end up having a feminine form at the end of the derivation process but we begin with the laukika vigraha udhrutaha odanaha yasyaha is marked in the bold characters as well as underlined to highlight the fact that this is the interrelation between the constituents of the samasa and the anya padartha so we have the laukika vigraha udhrutaha odanaha yasyaha sa and now we have the alaukika vigraha namely udhruta plus su and now we have the alaukika vigraha namely udhruta plus su plus odana plus su so samasa saudhnya takes place so pratipadika saudhnya takes place so we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho which deletes both the sups so we have udhruta plus zero plus odana plus zero and when we join them together we get udhruta odana and when we do the sandhi operations we get the form udhruta odana now when we add the suffix su after it the sub suffix udhruta odana plus su now we remember that the vigraha consisted of the word yasyaha yasyaha sa which indicated that the anya padartha is in feminine gender and therefore udhruta odana which is the bahuvrihi samasa output which is a qualification of that sa has to take the form of a feminine and therefore now we add the feminine suffix tap here so we have udhruta odana plus tap plus su now a is the pratyaya visible or audible in tap so we have udhruta odana plus a plus su 
and then because of a by the application of the sutra halgya bhyodirghat suti sapruktam hal su gets deleted so we have udhruta udana plus a and then we join them together and we get the form udhruta udana udhruta udana udhruta udana sthali a vessel from which rice was extracted let us now move ahead and see an example where the anya padartha has the relationship of swaswami bhava denoted by the shashti vibhakti with the constituents so the meaning to be conveyed is one who possesses yellow robe one who has yellow robe pitam ambaram yasya saha so here yasya is marked in bold as well as underline to indicate that this word is the interrelation between the constituents of the samasa and the anya padartha so pitam ambaram yasya saha is the laukika vigraha and then we get the alaukika vigraha pita plus su plus ambara plus su and then the samasa saudhnya takes place then pratipadika saudhnya takes place then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and we get pita plus 0 plus ambara plus 0 and then we join them together and we get the form pita ambara and then we do the sandhi operation and we get the form pitambara once we decide to use it in the sentence we add the suffix su and so we get pitambara plus su and then su gets substituted by ru sasajusho ruhu and ru gets substituted by visarga by the sutra kharavasana yor visarjani yaha so we get the form pitambara pitambara हरि ही विष्णु उपोजसेस येलो रोब दैट इज द मीनिंग सिमिलरली लेट अस स्टडी द रिलेशन अवयव अवयवी भाव बिटवीन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स एंड द अन्य पदार्थ एक्सप्रेस्ड बाय द षष्ठी विभक्ति सो द मीनिंग टू बी कन्वेड इज वन हू हैज बिग फेस और हेड हेड so we have the laukika vigraha pancham ananam yasya saha here yasya is marked with bold characters as well as underlined in order to highlight the fact that there is avayava avayavi bhava sambandha between the constituents of the samasa panchanana and the anya padartha so we have the laukika vigraha pancham ananam yasya saha and now we get the alaukika vigraha pancha plus su plus anana plus su then the samasa saudhnya takes place then the pratipadika saudhnya also takes place so we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and so we get pancha plus 0 plus anana plus 0 and when we join these together we get pancha anana and when we do the sandhi we get pancha anana as the finally derived bahuvrihi samasa output over here now when we add the suffix su after it pancha anana plus su we get the form panchananaha panchananaha shivaha and panchananaha simhaha panchanana is a qualification panchanana is an epithet of shiva as well as simha now let us look at the third meaning of the shashti vibhakti janya janaka bhav which is the relation between the anya padartha and the constituent padarthas this anya padartha and this relation denoted by the shashti vibhakti so we have the meaning to be conveyed is one whose son is well known and the laukika vigraha is khyatah putrah yasya saha khyatah putrah yasya saha the word yasya is marked with bold characters as well as underline in order to highlight the fact that the anya padartha is related with the constituent padarthas in the sense of janya janaka bhav being expressed by the shashti vibhakti in this case yasya now we have the laukika vigraha khyatah putrah yasya saha and then this gets transformed into the alaukika vigraha khyatah plus su plus putra plus su and then the samasa saudhnya takes place then pratipadika saudhnya takes place then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho so we have khyatah plus khyata plus 
plus putra plus zero and when we join them together we get khyata putra as the finally derived bahurihi samasa output khyata putra when we add the pratyaya su after it we get the form khyata putra khyata putra raja the king whose son is well known khyata putra raja there is one note that needs to be added over here namely in the sense of near denoted by the shashti the bahurihi samasa does not take take place in sanskrit as is observed by the commentators they say anantaradishu na bhavati in the sense of anantara which is near the shashti samasa does not take place so chitraha gavaha yasya anantaraha whose for whom the variegated colored cows are nearby here you don't have compounds compound form chitra chitragu in the sense of chitraha gavaha yasya anantaraha this is not possible speakers of sanskrit have made no bahurihi samasa in this particular sense which is a peculiar feature of the sanskrit language let us now study the relationship of adhikarana that exists between the anya padartha and the constituent padarthas the adhikarana meaning is denoted by the saptami vibhakti so the meaning over here to be conveyed is where there are valiant men viraha purushaha yasmin saha viraha purushaha purushaha yasmin saha this is the laukika vigraha in this vigraha the word yasmin is marked in bold characters primarily to highlight the fact that adhikarana which is denoted by the saptami vibhakti in yasmin is the interrelation between the constituent padarthas and the anya padartha so from the laukika vigraha vira purushaha yasmin saha we get the alaukika vigraha in the form of vira plus su plus purusha plus su so now we have the samasa saudnya taking place after that we add the samasanta pratyaya kap at the end so we have vira plus su plus purusha plus su plus kap by 54 154 and then we have vira plus 0 plus purusha plus 0 plus k on account of the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and then we join them together and we get the form vira purushaka this is the finally derived bahuvrihi samasa output vira purushaka from viraha purushaha yasmin saha now after we add the pratyaya su after vira purushaka we get the form vira purushaka ha so we use it in the sentence like vira purushaka ha grama ha a village where there are valiant men let us now take a look at the examples and the kind of understanding that they generate the lo- both the laukika vigraha as well as the samasa when you have praptam udakam yam saha as the laukika vigraha the understanding is grama karma ka prapti kartrakam udakam grama karma ka prapti kartrakam udakam udak which is the karta of prapti which has grama as the karma grama karma ka prapti kartrakam udakam when the same laukika vigraha is processed and the compound output is generated in the form of prapto dak the meaning however reverses and says udak kartak prapti karmi bhuto gramaha now prapto dak becomes the adjective of grama and therefore the entire meaning will have to be rephrased udak kartak and prapti karmi bhuto gramaha similarly udaha rathaha yena saha is the laukika vigraha which means anadut kartruka udvahana karmi bhuto rathaha this is the meaning of the laukika vigraha but when we do the samasa udha rathaha anadvan then 
द मीनिंग डिनोटेड इज रथकर्मक उद्वहन करता अनडवान सो द मीनिंग गेट्स ड्रास्टिकली रिवर्स्ड रथकर्मक उद्वहन करता अनडवान दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ऊढ़ रथ एज अ समास सिमिलरली उपहृतम हवि यस्म सह इन दिस केस देव संप्रदानक उपहरण कर्मीभूतम हवि दिस इज द नेचर ऑफ द बोध एज फार एज द लौकिक विग्रह इज कंसर्न बट वेन वी डू द समास वी हैव उपहृत हविस एज द समास एंड देन वी गेट द मीनिंग हविष्कर्मक उपहरण संप्रदानम देव सिमिलरली वेन वी हैव उधृत उदन यस्या सा एज द लौकिक विग्रह वी गेट द मीनिंग स्थाली अवधिक उद्धरण कर्म ओदन स्थाली अवधिक उद्धह उद्धरण कर्म ओदन बट वेन वी डू द कंपाउंडिंग एंड उद्धृत उदन इज द आउटपुट वी गेट द मीनिंग ओदन कर्मक उद्धरण अवधि स्थाली Similarly, when we have pitam ambaram yasya saha, the meaning denoted is hariswaka pita vishistam ambaram. Hariswaka pita vishistam ambaram. But when the meaning, but when the words get compounded and we get the finally derived bhavrihi samasa output as pita ambara, the meaning denoted is pita vishista ambara swami harihi. So the order in the bodha is reversed similarly finally viraha purushaha yasmin sah in this case gramadhikarana vira vishishtaha purushaha this is the understanding generated but when the samasa takes place vira purushakaha then the understanding is vira vishishta purusha adhikarana gramaha this is how the meaning changes as far as the samasa process is concerned to summarize in the bahurihi samasa the meaning of the respective karaka is expressed by the process of compounding samasena abhidhanam also since these karakas are expressed by the samasa the entities associated with those karakas get the prathama vibhakti also the meaning of the shashti is expressed by the process of compounding in the meaning of the meaning of the dissolution that is vigraha of the bahuvrihi samasa and the meaning of the bahuvrihi samasa differ in terms of the head modifier relationship in the dissolution or vigraha the element which is the constituent is the head and the outer meaning anya padartha is the modifier however in the samasa the anya padartha is the head and the constituent is the modifier this is the pattern that we have followed in arranging and analyzing all the meanings from the given samasas we continue studying this particular sutra and various statements added to it in the form of vartikas even in the next lecture these are the texts referred to thank you very much